everyone, Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here, coming at you with a little stitch with me with the beautiful Luz Gonzalez Spanish Colonial Sampler, where I'm working on some satin stitches. Hope you all are doing well today. I'm pausing because Nina just like kind of looked at me and like who are you talking to like she was gonna run away because mommy's just like losing it and then she's like no I'll just move over here and lick my tail <laughs> anyways hope you guys are all doing well on this Friday whatever time of the day it is or Saturday morning Going into afternoon for our Aussie, New Zealand friends. People all over the world, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. I am doing well here. It is a Friday morning still here on Oahu. It is 10.39 in the morning on Friday, February 8th. 71 degrees and fair. I hope you can't hear the... um. The power washer people I know I mentioned in the other video in my last video that they were doing our steps and landings outside now they've moved over today they're in the building across the road from us and um, it's still loud enough that I had to shut the window so that I could do this so I hope it isn't too disturbing Liz Gonzalez That is what I have done so far. For those who may not remember the pattern, this is it here, 1851 Spanish Colonial Reproduction Sampler. And I am working right up here on these satin stitch sections at the top. It is just such a striking piece. I am glad to be back to it. I spun the wheel this morning I worked the past two days on the Modern Folk Embroidery um, Four Seasons Quaker that was last year's stitch along. And it was time to move on today, so I spun the wheel this morning and was thrilled when Luz Gonzalez came up. So here we are. I am... A little bit slower on this than usual. So in some parts I can use the sewing method, in some parts I can't, just depending on which direction I'm going. This is a 40 count linen from Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. And because of um, recording this, you know, the, the phone is in between me and my stitching, so I'm kind of, and because it is 40 count, I'm kind of, having to look a little more carefully. Not that I don't always look carefully, but you know, it's not as close to me, I guess, as it normally is, the fabric. I'm also actually sitting on my bed recording this. The My, my phone holder device is hooked onto the, clamped onto the headboard. Um, I'm in here because it's so much cooler. It was getting pretty warm out in the living room where I usually record. So I decided to come in here and the light was pretty good. The only problem was the, the noise coming in from the power washers across the street. But um, the light's a little bit less than what I usually stitch with, so that doesn't help. All right, let me, isn't that pretty? Gosh, I just love that. And the silk, the shine on it trying very hard not to muss with the stitches too much so that they don't lose their kind of silky I don't want them to get that fuzzy look that kind of a braided look all right so let me see where am I going with this I'm going all the way down and then build back up all right this little section here once I get down to 
Once I get down to the end there, I'm going to have to pay a little more attention to the pattern. So, what is going on in your world? Not much here. It's Friday. I'm not sure if we're doing... Well, we hope to get up to the North Shore again this weekend. Don't know exactly what we'll see yet. We're also hoping to get down to a car dealership. Mike has decided we're going to lease a car. And um, there is a car dealership down in Honolulu that has a pretty good deal on Hondas, leasing Honda 2018 models. Um, you know, this is the time of year when they're... Actually, this is past the time of year when they're trying to get rid of the 2018 so that the, to make room for the 2019s. They probably already have the 2019s on their lots and they really want to get rid of the 2018s. So we hopefully will be able to take advantage of a deal. And by the time I talk to you next Tuesday, hopefully we will have a new car. We will have two vehicles so I can start getting out and about doing stuff. Let me look at this carefully. So this is going to go here. Oh shoot, wait a second. Nope, I'm not supposed to go down that far. Hold on. doesn't have anything next to it. That one gets a four, this one gets a two. All of these stitches are over four fabric threads, except like down here, this needs to be a straight line here. So this thread actually needs to be coming up over here, if that makes sense. Let me undo that and redo that. So other than those things, I don't know that, know that we really have anything special on the agenda this weekend. Besides just enjoying life on Hawaii and, you know, going to the grocery store. <laughs> Which is one of those necessities of life. Grocery store, laundry, all that fun stuff. If you guys follow me on Instagram or on my Jan Hicks Creates Facebook page, you know that I got out the sewing machine yesterday and actually did some sewing. Woohoo! I practiced a bunch of straight line stitches for a little bit and then I. Hold on, I had to, had to read. And then I. Um, did a zigzag on the edge of some of my fabric, some of my projects. I will do more of that today. And then, hold on, let me, let me examine my pattern here for a second. I think this one is still going to be straight edge <clears throat> that doesn't look that way <laughs> let me count I really like this pattern in that it kind of gives the she does a nice close-up picture of the of the satin stitch and the uh, this is what the satin stitch pattern looks like and I'm working right in here you can see how pale that is it's really hard to kind of see what she means so this really gives a much better idea okay so that and that and that I was right so then one two three four five full stitches yeah that and that and that. I always double check and triple check. That and that and that and then 
one, and that's the same. Okay, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, I also worked a little bit on putting a pillow together. You remember before the pillows that I finished for my Christmas Christmas in July, the the few that I did then. I hand stitched them. So one of the main reasons I wanted the machine was so that I could, you know, machine stitch finish the pillows so that it would go faster. So I worked on one yesterday and totally forgot to reinforce the corners and reinforce the um like the the beginning stitches and the ending stitches so when i turned them inside turned it inside out the one side of the beginning stitches um unraveled a bit so that was a little frustrating so that means i did i did um fill it with the polyfill a bit i have to fill it up some more but that means when i hand stitch you know that gap down at the bottom that you leave to fill it to turn it and to fill it when i hand stitch that i'm gonna have to like somehow catch that hand stitch that corner too um so that's going to be kind of a pain in the butt but it's not going to be i'm not going to worry about it too much because i am going to be putting an edging around that pillow some kind of cording or something i'll probably i, I have a a cord maker one of those twister thingies so i'll be making um making some kind of cording to put around that and then i also hope to I also hope to, um, sorry about that, to work on you know, that little filigree heart that I showed, I finished the stitching, um, that I showed in my last video. I also hope to put that together into a pillow today. That was up one too far, shoot. You know, it's just one linen thread up that I have to go. There we go. Um, and two over. So when you're reversing direction like that, it's kind of like, am I in the right place or aren't I? And that time I wasn't, but now I am. So anyways, I'm going, hoping to get that little filigree heart pillow finished. Um, I have the backing picked out and the edging, and I'm going to put the edging on with beads silver beads it'll kind of match the silver beads that are in bigger bigger ones size eights i think but they'll match the crystal lined ones that are in the kit so i think that'll be cute hopefully that will go better um like i said i want to i want to zigzag stitch some more of my project fabric so that it is nicely held together hold on one, two, three, four, five and a half. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five and a half. I just have to fill in these stitches, but I don't think this length of floss is going to work. This length of silk, it's not going to make it. But we shall see. We'll go as far as we can. So I got an interesting comment, one, a comment on um, one of these last videos of mine that I wanted to share with you and discuss. And I really wish we could discuss, um, you know, have a free-flowing discussion on here. That would be so cool. But one of my commenters said that she avoids hand-dyed fabrics because she's afraid that eventually down the road it will look um, dated. It will it will date itself just like, like well, she said like the geese in the 80s. You know, when you see a geese pattern, a pattern of um, geese, you kind of think, oh, that's an 80s pattern. 
Um, she gets the same vibe from hand dyed fabrics. And I thought that was rather interesting. Um, I had never heard that, that comment before, that kind of idea. And I think it's interesting and it's valid to a certain extent. I think there will be a time where certain of the hand dyed fabrics will kind of give off that vibe. Like right now there's kind of a, I think the more wild ones might do that. I don't think the kind of more gentler modeled ones will have that feeling because I think they, I think they do have a kind of timeless feel to them. But I could see things like, like, Right now, of course, because it's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, um, ice dyeing and snow dyeing is kind of popular. You see a lot of people doing it, and it gives a really, really cool effect. But some of the fabrics are kind of wild. And it's it's some of those fabrics that, you know, they're absolutely beautiful. They're real works of art. But they're the kind you look at and think, well, what, are you, what, are the world, what in the world do you stitch on them, right? Um... How do you find something that you can still show off the fabric? How am I going to make it? You can still show off the fabric, but still see the pattern. Oh boy, I have a stitch and a half left. Oh. Let's see, it's going to come out of the eye. We're just barely hanging on there. Um, so anyways, yeah, I thought that was interesting and I can see I can see her point for some of the some of the uh, hand dyes. Does that mean I won't use them? No, now I don't have any that are well, I have one that's more wild that is one of the ones that my friend CJ that I got from that she included in one of her boxes. <clears throat> Oy vey. Sorry for the in and out and in and out. Um, it's something I had to take care of. Well, actually, I had to clean up after an annoying cat. I had to go and come back, and I had to take care of something else. So here I am again. I may be dodging out again for a second, but that little area is done. And doesn't that look so pretty? With the silk and the satin stitches. I just love that. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So in the meantime, I ended that thread and stopped fighting with it and started it in the next section. So this one I'm going to attempt to do with the sewing method just so it goes a little faster. Of course, by the time I eyeball where my needle has to go. I'm not sure it's actually any faster at all, but anyway, it's a good thought. Sorry, I just bounced you around a bit. Um, so anyways, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be getting some colorful fabric to, to play with, but I would love to know your thoughts on colorful fabric. what you think, you know, kind of think about that idea. And it, it might be the first time that some of you have really um, heard that stated. So I just kind of like to get a conversation going and, and get your ideas on it. Like I said, I think for the most part, any... I don't really go for heavily dyed fabric anyway. Um, I think it's gorgeous. But again, because it's so hard to um, find patterns that will work on it, I tend to go for more subtle modeling. But some of the some of the other fabric, the the more wildly colored fabric, I think is gorgeous gorgeous enough to just frame and hang on the wall without any design on it. So yeah, let me know what you think. Let's see what else is happening. So yesterday Mike and I took a walk um, just down the road here in our little area. There's actually a little stream that runs over that way. Oh, and in, in, in addition to the um, to the power washers, I think we now have a weed whacker going. 
Nothing like having the place beautifully maintained, right? Who am I to complain? Um, but anyways, we took a walk and kind of there's a, a little park that runs along the stream. Um, and it was just a really, really pretty afternoon for that. And it, it kind of struck me again, you know, so much of the vegetation here. I used to be a huge gardener back in Maryland. I was very, very, very familiar with plants in the, and of course grew up in Pit, in the Pittsburgh area. So in, with plants in the zone six, zone seven, zone eight area, um, you know, that's what I grew up with. That's what I, I grew. I had a, a front flower bed, front garden that, um, goodness, dogwoods, Japanese maple, irises, Japanese irises, tiger lilies that were um, volunteers that were growing wild when we moved in there, um, when we had the house built. Um, bleeding hearts and crocuses and daft spring was always my favorite season. So I planted bulbs every autumn and just had a all kinds of spring bulbs coming up in the spring. Loved it. Oh goodness, what else? Roses, of course. Peonies, love peonies. Clematis, we had a trellis, an archway over our sidewalk out front that had clematis growing up it. Um, a stilby and hosta in the shady areas. I mean, just all kinds of things. So moving to Florida was kind of a um, a rude shock because <laughs> I, I didn't know any of the plants and it's the same here you know and and I get it I got a tickle there and I get a tickle here seeing all the plants that I used to grow as house plants in Maryland growing in the wild here philodendron climbing up trees philodendron that are huge climbing up trees, mother-in-law's tongue, poinsettias. Oh, you can grow poinsettias outside. Of course you can. Um, it just, I just love it. So taking the walk by this stream um, yesterday, you know, talk about things that fill you with joy, just gorgeous. And there's these trees, the big tree that you can see in the picture and the pictures that I've posted of the view out of our screen door the big tree with the white trunks. There's a ton of those growing in this area. And they are just, their canopies are gorgeous. Those white trunks are just amazing. Um, yeah, just, just love it. I still don't know what any of the plants are really, <laughs> except like I said, the ones that I used to grow as house plants. And you know, we'd put them outside on the deck, you know, a couple months of the year and think, oh yeah, this is so pretty. And then all oh, before the first frost, we gotta bring them in. Yeah, don't have to worry about that here, do we? Will you stay out of the way? Yelling at my fabric. Isn't that something we all do? So, you know, we get, um, we get joy from those kind of little things. And I've really been touched by how many of you have responded to my little messages of joy and have stated how much you love those. But I really wanted to give a shout out to Kyle Reckemeyer. <clears throat> yes, Kyle, you said your name in your video yesterday. So now we all know. Um, he took it a one step further. He is taking my concept of finding your joy and spreading that on his channel as well, which I think is just awesome. I think we should all do that, whether you have a channel or you don't have a channel. Find a way to spread the joy. Find a way to encourage others in your day to spread the joy. But he took it one step farther by saying, um, reach out to those who, you know, we all put on a mask. We all pretend that we're okay for a variety, of, a variety of reasons. Either we don't want to get into it, you know, we don't think people will care, or we just think that, you know, it's not proper to just let people know how we're feeling. And so we put on masks 
And so that person that you see every day that you think, oh boy, is she always a happy person? Wouldn't it be nice to be happy like that? It could just be a mask. So he's encouraging people to reach out and just ask, how are you doing? I'm thinking of you. I want you to know that. There might be somebody that you haven't talked to in a while and they've been on your mind. Don't just have them on your mind. Reach out. Ask them. You know, and know there, there's a lot of a lot of scary things with social media these days, but one of the great things is that it does make it easier to reach out and touch somebody. And I didn't mean to <laughs> use a little slogan there, but I guess I did. Um, you know, just let them know you're thinking of them. I think a lot of people really appreciate that, and it means more than we realize. The other thing I wanted to say is um, one of the things that's so sad about certainly our, the United States, where we are right now as a country, but I think just people in general have a tendency to, you know, we kind of amplify the negative. We give voice and more attention to the negative we're more likely to shout out the negative than we are the positive. Mike and I realized early on that we as a human species almost always think the worst of people. We don't even give a thought to, well, that person might be having a bad day. If somebody, you know, gives you a dirty look in a parking lot or takes your space or there's a little bit of road rage going on or you know anything like that where you we, we automatically think oh the guy's a jerk it could just be that something really bad happened usually when somebody like speeds by us on the road you know and is kind of a jerk about it my first response is, oh, well, he obviously has to much more important places to go than we do. And part of it is sarcasm and, you know, just kind of, you know, he's being a jerk. But it could be that that person has more important places. I, I have very few important places to go these days. So I encourage you to to not make your first reaction to be one of, uh, I don't know whether discontent is the right word, you know, so an example, you're in a grocery store and, you know, we women especially, I think are bad at this. We see somebody looking at us and our first response is, well, what are you looking at? Our first response is, you know, oh, well, just because you're all dressed up and I'm not doesn't mean I'm less than you. And I think a lot of that comes from, or, you know, yeah, I didn't have time to get, to get you know, put on makeup or whatever, or, you know, I, I don't go to the grocery store to be seen, or, you know, our first response is always kind of negative, I think. And I think a lot of that stems from our own perception of ourselves. But what if somebody's looking at you and they're saying, you know, they're not like looking down on you, but they're saying, boy, she looks really pulled together or she looks really calm or boy, I wish I could be that calm, cool and collected one. I'm out with my kids or, you know, you don't know what's going through somebody else's mind. I get a lot of looks when I'm out, mostly because of my hair. I get a lot of compliments on my hair. <laughs> but if I, if I got upset every time I saw somebody giving me a look, well, you know, that, that's not any way to live a life. So again, um, I, don't, I don't know whether this is a bunny trail or not. It just strikes me, though, that, and like I said, Mike and I have discussed this a lot in our, in our relationship when we first started, um, how people think the worst of each other. That's our first reaction. And I, I do think it's human nature, and it's rather sad. And on a totally different bunny trail... This is the back of the, the stitching. I think I have some, some threads here that are coming out of their 
little secured place that I'm going to have to fix. And that's probably from me having the fabric rolled up like this backwards with my fingers kind of on it. I'm going to have to be aware when I'm securing my ends that I kind of do it more than I normally would. Talk about a totally different topic than we have been talking about. <laughs> That's okay. Conversations rabble, ramble hither and yon. Speaking of conversations rambling hither and yon. Hold on one second. So anyway, I had to cut away again. Sorry about that. I know for you it was just like off on or actually just transition in between shots. For me, it was more like five minutes. And I don't even remember what I was talking about. One thing I did want to mention, though, and ask your prayers and positive thoughts for, sorry, keep bumping you. Okay. Um is for my father-in-law. He has been having some health, health issues. He has been into and out of the emergency room at Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, very weak, out of breath, not able to do anything like even walking from the bed to, bedroom to the bathroom has made him out of breath and, and weak and um, they've ruled out pretty much everything, <laughs> you know, heart attack, stroke, embolism, um, anything pulmonary, um, uh, bleed with, from blood thinners, um, you know, they've, they've run all kinds of tests. And um, he's back home again after his latest bout in the emergency room. He will be going back in Tuesday. They did lower GI. He'll be going back in Tuesday, I think, for tests on upper GI. They just can't find out what the problem is. So um, my mother-in-law is having to drive back and forth from Surprise, Arizona to Scottsdale, which is um, a good hour drive without traffic. But it means she has to drive like through Phoenix. And um, that, that's a lot for her to drive. She's 86 years old, sharp as a tack, but still that's a lot. And we're, we're pretty worried about both of them. So if you would keep them in your thoughts for the doctors to find out what's wrong and get it fixed um, and for safe travels all the time. There is apparently a hotel that family members can stay in over on the grounds of the, of the Mayo Clinic, but it's like $400 a night. <laughs> That's just insane. So she stayed there a couple nights when she was too tired to drive back, but that's just, that's a lot of money to be putting out. So anyways, keep them in your thoughts if you wouldn't mind. We are, Mike and I are expecting that the call could come at any time that we have to make a trip to Phoenix. Um, hopefully not because of bad news, um, but just to, to help them with whatever they need help with, so. Anyways, um, in the meantime, I think that's about all from here. I'm sorry this was so chopped up. I felt very disorganized and lots of interruptions and wasn't really able to give, lose the attention she deserves. though she will get it for the next couple couple days so until let's see probably next tuesday 
unless something comes up before then. <laughs> I will talk to you soon. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Take care and spread that joy. Love you guys. Bye-bye.